notorious creatures of legends known for dragging sailors, swimmers, and annoying doozies to their watery graves with our beautiful, alluring songs. What? You don't believe me? Well, here. Ah! See? Now you're hypnotized and you have no choice but to watch this video until the end. That'll teach ya. Now, my brothers and sisters just swam over to the Netherlands to talk to some V comma guy about installing a tilting torture device. We're gonna use it on enthusiasts who try to tell us that pipe scream isn't a credit. <laughs> but they left me behind to introduce this year's Hello Weekends vlog. Because apparently you mortals will actually pay money to get scared. <laughs> what idiots you are. Well, you're in for a treat. Because in tonight's vlog, we're going to cover all the mazes, all the scare zones, some sinister shows, and clowns. I don't know why you drive all the way to Sandusky for that when you can just look in a mirror, but whatever. So, without any further ado, <laughs> let the Hello Weekends vlog begin! Now get out of here, scram! to Adventures with Parker. Today we are back at Cedar Point. Well, actually I think this is going to be the first Cedar Point vlog that I put on the channel this season because it's really my third visit to the park this year. But the first time I went, I didn't vlog anything. The second time I went with Mitch and Burke and that's going to be part of a separate series which I haven't gotten around to editing yet. So I guess, I guess it's my first Cedar Point vlog of 2024. We are here on September 12th, which is the opening night of Halloween Weekends 2024. And uh, this is my first haunt event of the year, which is super exciting. I have plans to get to a few different haunt events this year, but yeah, we're starting here at Halloween Weekends. And I mean, this is an event that I've been to before and I don't think there's anything overtly new this year, at least as far as mazes and scare zones go. There might be a few differences and I'll be sure to talk about those as I notice them, but it's not like there's any big new marquee attraction this year, but still it's a fun event and they always do such a great job with their Halloween stuff. So I'm just really excited to be here and check it out. So I don't really have a specific plan of attack for today. The mazes and scare zones won't open for another two hours. So I guess I'm going to be going around and getting a few rides in until then. But there is something I wanted to point out real quick, which is that we are here on a Thursday the thing about coming to Halloween weekends on Thursdays is that there's a few different pros and cons. For one thing, the hours are reduced, so the park didn't open until 6 today. So if you want to really maximize your time, you might want to consider going on another day of the week. However, the trade-off with that is that the park is going to be less busy. However, uh, another thing that you got to keep in mind is that you're not going to get a lot of the uh, family-friendly kids' activities in the daytime because obviously the park isn't open during those times and also you aren't gonna get any of the shows. There's a few, like I think there's Butchers of Rock, but you're not gonna get the opening ceremonies or the midnight show or anything like that. So again, you just gotta kind of consider the pros and cons and what you're willing to trade off. You now for me, I just had the day off and it was just super easy for me to come down here today, but I do wanna make sure I come back later in the season on a Friday or Saturday, just so I can be sure that I uh, get some shows in. He stood and stared. He must not have cared. So I bit off his head. I think he might be dead. <laughs> I like that. Let's 
so one of my favorite things here at Hollow Weekends is their old cemetery of past rides. So when you look around, you'll see tombstones for things like the Sky Wheel and Mean Streak. And this year, they actually have one of the old Mean Streak cars here, which is really cool. I love when parks do this, when they actually bring out old artifacts from past rides and show them off for the public to see one more time. Of course, I never got to do Mean Streak myself since my first visit to Cedar Point was after Seal Vengeance was built. but. I, uh, I'm aware of its legacy, so it's really nice that I get a chance to see it for the first time. Same with over here, we have the Zero Car for Mantis, which of course now runs as a floorless coaster, Rougarou. But again, it's a neat little piece of history that we only get to see here at Halloween Weekends. All right, I have been in the park for almost 15 minutes now and I have yet to be on a roller coaster. So I think we ought to change that. Now, one ride that I haven't done at all this season yet is Iron Dragon, which is the park's aero suspended coaster. And I mean, the thing about this ride is that it isn't necessarily one that I prioritize. Like it's not as good as other aero suspended coasters like the Bat or Vortex. But you know what? It's really fun and really cute. And I just love how it kind of meanders over the lagoon, especially uh, now during the fall. Like it's, it's an aesthetic and I, I've been wanting to ride it all season, but I usually don't because it's not on the fast lane and I just don't have the patience to wait for it. But since there's no line now, I figured it'd be the perfect opportunity to make it happen. So yeah, that's what we're doing. Okay, fine, it's a little boring. My real reason for riding it was uh, because I wanted to get a little sneak peek of what was going on over at Top Hill too, because uh, one of those turns, you practically go right over the station. I didn't see any activity and I don't think we are going to see anything for the rest of the season. The park did announce that the ride won't be opening until 2025, but you know what? I, I just wanted to see it, okay? I did not get a chance to ride it earlier this year and I at least wanted to get a view of it. You know what I mean? It is what it is, I guess, and I got to ride a roller coaster, so I, I can't complain about that. Since I was right here, I wanted to do Millennium Force as my next ride, but it looks like it's delayed for the time being, which it's all right, it happens. But I think since I'm already heading this way, I'm just gonna keep on going and do some of the rides over in Frontier Town. And I also wanna think about grabbing dinner because I wanna eat before the haunt stuff opens. Because I mean, that's gonna be prime time that I don't wanna waste standing in line for food. So yeah, I think maybe we'll check out the farmhouse, do Maverick and Soul Vengeance and all of those good rides and see where we are from there. I guess the other good thing about heading over here now is the back of the park is where you'll find most of your haunt stuff. So it's kind of putting me in a good position for once all of those attractions open. <laughs>
And right here we have Snake River Falls, which just closed a couple weeks ago. I think September 2nd was its last day of operation. And I have only ever done this ride once. I was considering doing it again this season when I heard that it was closing, but I just ended up having other plans when I was here uh, earlier in the summer. So I never really got to say goodbye to it. And I am kind of sad that it's going and probably not as sad as the locals who have a lot more uh, nostalgia and attachment with this ride. But it'll be interesting to see what takes its place. I, I, I think a wooden coaster would be great in this spot or maybe one of those splash battle rides if they wanted to still do something in involving water. But yeah, it's bittersweet, you know, like it's hard to lose such a nostalgic classic attraction like this, but I'm sure the park has great plans for this space and we'll just have to wait and see what happens in the future. <laughs> I decided to grab dinner from the farmhouse and I ended up getting the wood-fired steak with the cheese and broccoli casserole. The steak was really good for theme park food and the casserole was pretty good too, but it could have used a little something like maybe more cheese, maybe an extra ingredient or two, but overall it was pretty good. All right, so another new to me experience that I got to do today is Pipe Scream, which again, for some reason, I just always passed it up every time I came to Cedar Point and I figured today would be as good as day as any to ride it. And I actually really enjoyed it. I liked it more than I thought I would. Um, so yeah, I'm glad that I, uh, I got to cross it off the bucket list today. Now, there is something that I have to do while we're here at the park. It's always a tradition of mine to ride Magnum at sunset and you know, it's that time of day now, so <laughs> here I am at Magnum and I'm probably going to just marathon the heck out of this until all the honk stuff opens. rides on Magnum later and it is now 8 o'clock which means it's spooky time! <laughs> all of the scare zones are going to be populated with monsters now, all the mazes are going to be open and we are starting with the uh, clowns butchers of rock area which is pretty cool because they have like you know the punk rock scary clowns whatever running around and then they also paired this area with a pretty cool show so that shows at 8 15 which means we have about 10 15 minutes to explore the scare zone before it starts. The clown royals themselves, fresh off the hall of infamy tour, give it up for the Butchers of Rock. You call that a class? Don't make me laugh. You won't like me when I'm funny. We are the Butchers of Rock, and we plan to liven up your sad, miserable lives with our humorous harmonies. I better see you screaming and laughing until your sides make like a banana and split. If you have any taste, unlike those Hall of Fame 
next song is going to be a lap. Ryan. Eva. Good. Eva. Good. Hey, what you doing, bubble floor, typhoon, and I'm playing on my side and bum. Anymore, anymore, can I take it anymore? Got to get away from this bubble floor. Crazy. So cold, crazy, you know. Just watch the Butchers of Rock show, which is awesome. <laughs> Just watch the. That's so good. Watch the vlog. <laughs> okay, uh, just watch the Butchers of Rock show, which was really good. Um, I like how they changed it up from last year. They did switch out one of the characters. I love the new female lead. Um, I like how they did new songs, but they still kept uh, Fear of the Dark at the very end because I mean that goes so hard, and it's a classic that everyone like. As soon as it started playing, everyone's like, yes. We're getting this song again. So I like it. Like just from the position of like backstory and lore, it's kind of like they're doing a new tour, but then they're ending with like their big hit or whatever. But it was fun. It's super hype. And as these shows tend to do, I can only imagine it will get better as the season goes on. I'm so ready. Let it rock. Yeah. I'm ready for the push. <laughs> <laughs> Hello! Hello! How way to hell! How way to hell! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>
All right, we are heading back into Frontier Town, or as it's known during Halloween weekends, the Tombstone Territory. And normally this guy moves, but he looks like he's staying still for now. I think <laughs> hello people okay yes but our real reason for coming through this area is to do the amazing contraction that is steel vengeance and there's a maze back here blood bath so we're gonna be sure to do that while we're here as well two mazes in so far which isn't a lot i actually did a lot more rides than i was originally planning on doing but that's okay i got to hang out with my friends laurel and daniel for a bit uh, but now we are just focusing on mazes for the rest of the night so i started off with bloodbath which is the wine over by still vengeance and then i just did the freak show both of these have been around since i started going to hello weekends and there really isn't anything new with them at least compared to last year uh, they are really good mazes i really do appreciate the detail especially in freak show there's a lot of really cool props in there and they make good use of animatronics and both of them gave me some pretty good scares but the one thing that i'm just kind of noticing about this year's event is that there's really nothing new like if you went last year you're not getting a lot of anything that's updated or changed except for the bushers of rock show they did uh change that out a little bit but other than that it's just a lot of a lot of the same stuff which is fine like it's good stuff so it's really not too big of a flaw but it is kind of nice to see a new maze or maybe one of the older mazes get a refresh so that's just one little thing that's missing other than that it's uh it's pretty good so far the next thing on our list tonight is cutthroat cove which is marketed as a scare zone but it's really more like an outdoor maze that is the one interesting thing about cedar point's pond is that there are traditional scare zones like tombstone territory and the uh the clowns one that we did earlier and then there's a few of these more walkthrough style scare zones there's uh cutthroat cove corn stalkers and uh, blood on the bayou functionally they're more like mazes than they are regular scare zones and this one is really cool because i mean it's got the cool pirate theming and you're going uh back behind maverick Ahoy there! It seems that I have survived Cutthroat Cove for the most part. Um, <laughs> it's really fun! Like I was saying before I went in, um, that one always has really good costuming and there's always some great scares and because that path is so long like it just creates a very nice extended experience. It's really fun. I wish I could show you the inside of it and two years ago I was allowed to film in these like scare zone mazes but they seem to have changed that last year and kept that policy in place uh, for this season as well, but I mean you can go back and watch that video if you want to have a more in-depth look at it But it is super fun and I'm um, about to do another one because we are walking by court stalkers It's a lot more fun when you do it on your own, whereas uh, this time around it was more conga line style, I guess. And I think I've said this in other years, but this one does a good job at making you feel like you're out in the middle of a field and that you're not actually in the theme park. So um, atmospherically, it's really well done. I think it's better than Corn Stalkers back home in Canada's Wonderland. The other nice thing about it is that it dumps you right here beside Slaughterhouse, making it an easy choice for our next maze of the night. So there are like 
no lines tonight. Not for the coasters, not for the houses. So um, even though it's kind of late into the evening, by the time we're getting around to all of these houses, we're making really good time. So there's not much I can say about Slaughterhouse that I haven't already said in other seasons. It's gory, it's kind of smelly. It's really good. Like it's one that gets me quite a bit, especially because like I really don't like chainsaw scares. And um, they didn't have a traditional one this year, but they did have this weird, like it was a room with a strobe and they had a guy with the chainsaw. It didn't make the, you know, like the, the noise it normally does, but it, it was still interesting and kind of got to me. And like I said, it is super gory. If you are, thinking about going vegetarian, uh, this maze will seal the deal. <laughs> oh, and I uh, went to load on that one as well. So I got every possible scare that you could get. So that was uh, horrible and amazing at the same time. I mean, I love getting scared. That's why I come here, but uh, yeah, it, it's um, it's a lot when, when all of the attention is focused just on you. Anyways, we are making such great time right now. We are heading into our next scare zone, which is Blood on the Bayou. And I think I actually skipped this last season. I think I was running low on time. I, I don't remember, to be honest. But um, thinking back to when I did it a couple years ago, I remember it was one of my favorites. So I, uh, I assume it'll be the same this year. Okay, I'm not sure how I feel about that one. It was... Uh, very different from the last time I remember. I mean, it used a lot of the same props, but um, they changed the layout completely. And it's much longer now. It pretty much takes up all of Millennium Island now that Forbidden Frontier is uh, done for. I guess they uh, took over that space a little more. But I, I don't know how I feel about it because although I love the theme and I did get some pretty good jump scares in there, it was too long. And that's, you know, I, I like longer mazes and I like having that exploratory aspect and um, mazes that make you feel immersed like you're way out in the middle of nowhere, but it was just too much walking with not enough scares. They needed to populate that with more scare actors in order for that longer layout to be effective uh, because for most of the time I was just walking, there's nothing, there's nothing, and then you got a scare and then you just walk a little more and there's just a whole lot more nothing and then yeah, the scares are just too few and far between. It's a great concept, and I think they could make it great, but yeah, I, I just don't know how I feel. <laughs> Hi! Hi! So I just did a ride on Millennium Force because I think Throw Warrior would end me if you found out that I uh, didn't do it. But uh, it's just after 11.30 now. So we are running out of time and there are two more houses that I haven't done yet. Now, I think I'm gonna head straight to Midnight first because that is one that, I mean, I just have to do it. It is one of my favorite bases of all time. So, um, yeah, between the two, that's the one I'd rather prioritize. If I have time, I will make my way back to Haunting of Yuri Estate. Because those two mazes, they aren't really that far apart. But again, I don't know if I'll have time to do both. And yeah. <laughs> So yes, I decided to end off the night by doing the Midnight Maze, which was really good. It was by far my favorite maze of the night, and I just love how it pays homage to Mr. Midnight, who is the uh, the mascot of Halloween games. Overall, this was a really good visit and a great way to kick off the haunt season. 
Halloween weekends as a whole is really well done. I think the mazes are really highly detailed. They do a good job at building up the sets. I love the outdoor scare zones that they have. And even though I didn't get to see a whole lot of them, I really love the shows here. And I, and I definitely need to come back later in this season, not on a Thursday, so I can see more of them. However, the one thing that I kept coming back to was that there's really nothing new in terms of mazes and scare zones, other than a few updates with Blood on the Bayou. And even though there are new shows, again, most of which I didn't get to see, it, it is always nice to see an update to the mazes, and I don't know, it just felt like something was lacking this year by not having a new offering of that sort, but again, it's still an amazing event, and I'm really glad that I got to go, and I am looking forward to returning later in the season. That's it! Show's over! <laughs> Thank you for watching this year's vlog and review from Halloween Weekend at Cedar Point. Glad to see you survived. Well, if you're bloodthirsty for more haunt content, be sure to subscribe. You can also find Parker on social media. I'm talking to Fishbook, the Instagram, and the Tide Talk. whoop de doo And for those of you who have sold your soul, I mean, subscribe to our Patreon account. We appreciate it. It really does help us create these hot vlogs. And if you would like to sell your soul, I mean, subscribe to our Patreon, you can visit patreon.com slash Parker to learn more. Well, it's time for me to go back below the surface. Thanks for coming.